Hi, I'm comic book artist and writer Neil Adams. Catch me on today's DC Daily. Welcome everyone to another episode of DC Daily. It is I, Sam the Hammer Humphreys, and I am here today with someone who would require an entire wing of the DC Comics library. Neil Adams, thank you so much for being here today. I think I have that wing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got the hall. Is it, is it over there? Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll come visit soon. All right, Neil, look, this is a, a, a crazy time. We're in the midst of a pandemic. We're all trying to stay safe. But we want to know, tell us, how are you doing? Is everything okay with you? You doing all right? I'm doing all right. My family's doing all right. We have a studio in New York. We have a store in L.A. Unfortunately, we can't sell any comic books until today. Excellent. That's bunker in L.A. In the, That's right. Far, the New York place is concerned. I mean, we don't really play the game as if we're like closed down. We play the game as if we're open. We do uh, two or three auctions a week. Uh, I'm, of course, like any freelancer, doing uh, pages all the time. You can't see the couch out there, but we've got all kinds of packages going that are going to go to the post office and to the FedEx guy. Been quite busy during this thing, and and uh, happily busy, and doing very, very well. By the way, thank you very much for asking. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. And I feel you as a freelancer. The deadlines never stop, not even for a pandemic. There's always more pages to do. One of the things I've been doing with my freelancer buddies is I've been saying, look, you know, guys, go out and do some auctions on, on uh, uh, the video. Learn new things to do. Here's another way you can make money on the work that you do. So everything feeds into the into the core and makes things just a little bit better. I mean, there's a lot of artists out there who have been turning to live streaming and doing sharing video of them as they draw. Are you considering exactly. doing anything like that? Exactly. Yes, we are. Yes. Oh, great. Check Facebook and uh, we're there. Uh, I have not all the time a lot. You have been uh, working for DC for over 50 years. Can you t like take us back in time a little bit and tell us what, what the landscape was like? What, what was DC like when you first started? It was as if the comic book industry had come out of a war. Everybody was hiding. Uh, I would talk to guys and, I would, and they'd say, why are you smiling so much? And I'd say, well, because I'm doing comic books. And they'd say, we don't say we do comic books. We say we're line illustrators. Remember in 1953, the Congress, Congress of the United States, attacked comic books and told people that, com that comic books turn kids into juvenile delinquents. Now, in the face of that, are you a comic book artist or are you a line illustrator? Did that discourage you at all? Me? Do yeah. I look like the person to be discouraged? I mean, I, I was going to let you say it, but yeah. Well, Oh, we don't get it, get discouraged. No, not, <laughs> not. no, I had to fight my way to get in. In fact, I, I had a syndicated strip before I did comic books. So I entered at a very much higher level than doing comic books. Now comic books have actually risen to the point that they are, my God, an art form. Art form, what the hell is that? It's like, we made it. I thought it was just crap, wasn't it? No, it's no. <laughs> an art form. Your cover for Green Arrow, Green Lantern 76 sold for $455,000, 2015. Hold on just a second. Yeah, what's the up? Cover for the reintroduction of Joker mm -hmm. sold for $600,000. $600,000. How does that make you feel about the work and the work that you did? I can, like I'm live, it's a fantasy. It's like, oh, I bet on comic books and I'm right. And somebody paid $600,000 for that cover. That's insane. It's just, ooh. Yeah. Stuff. So you've been writing and drawing Batman versus Raj al Ghul, right? Yeah. How does yeah. it feel, like, bringing these two, these are dyed-in-the-wool adversaries. How does it feel to bring them head-to-head -to -head together again? It's like bringing two smart people together. I like the characters, but I like the smart people part of them. It's sort of like they're against each other intellectually as well as physically because, you know, they get into fights, but Femi is not going to slug uh, Ra's al Ghul unless it's a very unique situation, but he's going to try to outsmart him and Ra's al Ghul is going to outsmart Batman. And the thing about Ra's al Ghul is that Ra's al Ghul isn't necessarily a bad guy. Maybe sometimes he's right. Most of the time he's wrong. And unfortunately, people die. And that's really sort of what the story is. It actually started in Batman Odyssey, went through Dead Man. And then mm -hmm. it appears. And the last issue is the culminating thing where you find out what you've been reading all these comic books for. And, oh, my God, it means something. Yeah. Something's the world. And the last issue, uh, it's kind of talky, 
uh, which you get in some comic books, but it's also about things that are important to the world. You're a writer and an artist, and so you've got more control than somebody just does writing like me or somebody just does the art. How do you decide when you do an issue that is more uh, action-based and dynamic and an issue that's more, more talky, like you said? I think we're into a, little t a time where we've got a little too much talking going on. And I think there ought to be a class in how you punch somebody while you're talking to them. Because that's, <laughs> that's what comic book guys used to do. You know, in real life, a conversation, it's just yak, 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 back and forth. If you've bored the artist enough that he's going to put in a Xerox repeating the same head over and over again, then you have actually bored your artist. If you're boring your artist, you're going to bore your audience. you got to kind of stop that and say, well, okay something should be going on while this action is taking place. It's action and it's conversation. So you have to communicate and you have to have action at the same time. The artist is your first audience, maybe after your editor, but they're the first audience. Yeah, first audience and first person you have to entertain mm -hmm. because this is an entertainment business. It is not a college debate. Things should be happening while the conversation is taking place. I've struggled to think about a single character at DC that you have not drawn. And even like right over your shoulder there, I see the Batman who laughs, who's like the new guy on the black. You're already on top of it. But is there a character that you haven't done a deep dive on, like a really in-depth story, a character that you really want to explore that you haven't done it yet? But I, I like you on horror, so I think you'd be good on a horror title again. There's a thought. There's a thought. I, you know, I did a, a, a Dracula uh, story, I think, with Len Wein, I think, over at Marvel. And yeah. uh, that's a pretty good. What about this? What about Batman? Okay, and cryptids. You know what cryptids Ooh, are? That would be great. Yeah. Okay. Sasquatch, Dogman. Mm -hmm. uh, Chupacabra. Chupacabra. Well, he's kind of he's more like a, we're like a raccoon and dog. He's not quite so good. You have things <laughs> called, you thing called wraiths. They're like, uh, albino have big eyes they're about seven feet tall and they can rip your head off i'm sold batman versus the cryptids uh i'm the editor i'm green lighting you and the writer is i'm also the writer so congratulations we're working together <laughs> all right i gotta ask you a silly question there's a harley quinn animated series here on dc universe it does a great job of taking characters and remixing them it's a very funny show and recently harley and poison ivy were on trial and their lawyer was none other than Man Bat. He argued a case very poorly, did not do a good job, but are you surprised? I, I'm a little I'm a little thrown by it because I can't imagine uh, uh, Kirk Langstrom becoming a lawyer. After, I mean, the idea of that guy becoming a lawyer, which are, you know, sort of like going from doing a good job to becoming an evil creature, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> not, not so good. So, so if you were on trial, you would pass on his services. Oh, yeah, no, we don't need him. <laughs> we talked about back in the day, the comic book industry felt like it just got out of a war and, and things were depressed. And there's a lot of uncertainty and worry right now about the comic book industry. Given your experience and all, yeah, did you, I don't know, maybe picked it up. But given yeah, your experience, I, and you've seen a lot of ups and downs, how do you think that we can come together and make sure that the industry pulls through this? But the business of comic books is hard to get past, okay? The business of comic books is something that we love, but it's a burden that we carry while we go to our attics or our basements and sit down and draw comic books. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we do, isn't it? I mean, we go all by ourselves and we go, what is comic? People say, people say things like, what is comic books all about? How do you do it? Well, the way you do it is you hire some really talented people you let them go home to their attic or their to their basement or their den or whatever it is and crank out comic books and stay up for 15 hours and turn this stuff in and try to get it in on deadline and create this stuff. And then they make movies out of it. And then they make television shows out of it. And everybody goes, wow, I wonder how that happened. It happened by magic. It's the magic of comic books. It's the, it's the craziest, most wonderful business in the world. I'll give you the best example I can give you, okay? Great. I sit down or somebody sits down and they turn out a comic book. Let's say you get a writer and you get an artist, you put them together, you get an inker. It takes about a month to turn out a comic book, okay? You can take that comic book and make a $250 million movie out of it and I can do another one next month. Like a new idea every month? Every month. And every month. And you can make a $250 million movie out of it. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. It's, it's an amazing, amazing business. business. They'll never catch us. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, Neil, thank you so much for taking the time and being here. Uh, it was a true pleasure talking with you. Please stay safe out there. Oh, it's a pleasure. You too. You too. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you. I will. I will for sure. Are you in your basement there? Or is that your collection behind you? Or this is in my office. Yes, this is all my collection. This is part of my collection back here. Why years of young Obi-Wan Kenobi? Thank you very much. Thank you. I take that as an honor. I appreciate that. Everybody else out there, you gotta go and check out Neil's work. We got so much of it on DC Universe. Go check it out right now. It's gonna make you happy. As for me, I'll be back next time. Bye, y'all.